today we're going to talk about the home break finish max. A lot of you have had a lot of questions and I want to knock those out one by one. So the first thing is setup. Let's figure out how to get this thing set up so that you're able to get it and go and you know what you're doing. A lot of times we get so scared about just taking it out the box um, and knowing how to get it right so that whenever we do go to spray, we're not ending up with some garbled mess. It's chunky or it's splattering or we're going to cover the bases so that you know exactly what to do going into every spray finish that you apply and you know it's not going to give you a hard time. So first thing is what will you get in the box? You're going to receive the sprayer itself. Now over time um, they may decide to add in or take away different little things um, depending on what seems to be necessary for the public. Um, you may or may not get an extra lid that comes with your cup. Um, this is to kind of store your paint in between projects. Um, I know I didn't, I purchased mine separately because I wanted a few cups to have on hand, but they're really, really handy. So you may get a lid to go onto your cup. Um, you may just get all of this. So I'm gonna put that back over there. Um, and another thing that you're gonna get is what's called a viscosity cup. This is your best friend. And I don't care if you're using the Finish Max or the Super Finish Max, which is it's a little bit cooler and stronger big brother. Um, I feel like this guy is just very valuable. And even if I'm using the Super, I tend to go back to using this because then I know exactly where the viscosity is. Um, and I guess I'm just kind of OCD like that. I don't know. Um, but it puts the power in your hands instead of just hoping that the, the tips that come with the super finish max are going to work properly or whatever. So it's just a little extra thing that you can do to make sure that you're not going to have problems in the end. Um, more than likely, you will only get the one cup. You're not going to get two cups, um, but this is an extra one that I purchased. You can purchase extra cups on Amazon um, or through homewright.com. So do that. You can store other paints. You can have it to mix up your paint and then be able to pour back and forth. It just makes life a little bit easier. Even if you just get one extra, it's, it's definitely helpful. Something that I like to have um, that you don't get in your box, but it makes life a lot easier is a fine mesh strainer. Now this is the one that you would find to go inside your sink or your drain um, to stop anything from going down that shouldn't. You can also find the ones that are used for cooking that may have a handle on them. All of them work great and here's why. It's one and done. You don't have to buy the little cones that you might get to strain your paint over and over again. If you're like me, you're gonna figure out how you can try to get by without having to go to the store that extra time. Um, this prevents me from doing it. So I use this, I rinse it out when I'm done and I put it away. Done. Um, we've got our paint. Today I'm gonna to use the Wise Owl in Poppy. This is a really vibrant red color. Really, it's just, I wanna play with this color and quite frankly, it's gonna be easy for you to see. It's red, right? Then you're gonna to wanna to have some sort of stir. A wood stirrer is fine. Make sure it's nice and clean so that you're not adding anything to the product that you don't want to have in there that could cause clogging. Um, you can also use like a little whisk, which may be good for your waterborne alkids or otherwise paints that just don't want to incorporate all that easily. Um, today, I'm just using this guy. What you do want to be careful of though is don't whip the paint. Whether you're using a whisk or this guy, whatever you use, don't whip it frantically. You don't want to add any air pockets in there that wouldn't otherwise be there. Again, you're asking for trouble, so stay away from that. And we can get started. So I'm gonna pull this guy back here. Hopefully you can see. I do already have my poppy opened up. Now, if you don't have the extra um, paint can, that's fine, this guy. Um, what you can also do is go to Lowe's or Home Depot, your favorite place, and purchase the measured out paint cups. It's just a plastic cup. It has little measurements on the side, but it's nice and narrow. Why do you want it narrow? Because you don't want to take too much to fill up this guy. 
if it's big and wide and flat, then you're never going to be able to scoop up enough paint to be able to use this to measure the viscosity. So try to keep it as narrow as possible. And actually, if I'm honest, those paint cups that you get from Lowe's or Home Depot would probably work better than this guy because as you can see, it does have a rather large bottom. So it'll be fine, we'll get through it, no problem, but it's just something to consider. So we're gonna get the poppy. As I get this, do y'all have that? Do y'all have those hairs that just like plague you? Okay. And we just went back from doing a YouTube worthy video to I'm going live again. Hey Karen. Wow, it's good. Oh, it's good to see you guys. Okay, so I'm starting to see names. Yes, good. And I know this is working, right? Y'all would let me know if you can't hear me or something like that. Um, good, yes, come back and watch later. Hey, Victoria. Y'all, did you see the piece that Victoria just did? It's so pretty. It's so pretty. And I know you're not, like, completely done with it. Can't wait to see the hardware and everything on it, but it's nice. Um, okay, so I've got my Wise Owl Poppy. I chose to go with... Um, a chalky type paint. It should be rather thick, especially, yeah, it's red. Oh, good heavens. Um, so it has to be nice and thick and, you know, um, have good coverage because it's red. Um, and it's going to be easy for you guys to see it. This is, this is quite a color. Do y'all yeah, see that? Now on my screen, I will say it's a little bit more orange than in real life. Um, but it's really pretty. Let me see if I can't scrape a little bit more off of there. And set this to the side. Um, I need water. Hold on one second. I'm going to grab water and then we're going to get started. Hey, Lena, now this is also a great time. If you have any questions about this, let's work through them. If you have any questions about the spraying stuff, um, about loading your sprayer, how to use what you, whatever, drop them here. I think I'll be able to see it and I'll be able to get to you with an answer. Hold on one second. All right, do we have any questions? Hey, Joyce. Okay, so what I grabbed was some water. No, this isn't actually from a water bottle. I just put it um, from the tap. If you really want to be super care careful, yes, go ahead and use um, distilled water. Reason being is if you put the paint back in the can, especially with the pure paints um, that are more like clay-based paints and stuff, um, any time that you put any kind of contaminants in there, you're risking it going bad. So it depends on how fast you're going to use it, um, all kinds of stuff. But if you can go with distilled, great. If not, honestly, it's not that big of a deal. Um, sometimes our OCD kicks in, though, and every little bit that we can do to make it all work better for us in the future, we do it. I went ahead and grabbed a narrow cup that's going to allow me to get the viscosity right and dip my cup in there and fill it up faster. So here we go, I've got the red. Now you want to pour it into a cup that's different than your spray cup, and here's why. In the end, we're gonna want to um, use that fine mesh sieve to strain it before it goes in. Um, so you wanna start in something else first. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in. It's thick. Oh my goodness, it's thick. Now it's not, as thick as say CC Caldwell's, if you've used that. Um, and it's not as thick as the DIY paint brand, um, but it is just, it's, thick. it's very pourable, pourable, very movable, but it's, it's just thick. Okay, 
So now that I've got that poured in, I'm going to go ahead and start by adding some water. Just looking at it, like I said, it's thick. I know it's going to need water, so I'm going to start. And then I'm going to use my stick to begin stirring it. I'm not going to be too vigorous because uh, like I said, I don't want to cause any air pockets and bubbles to happen, but I just want to get that water truly incorporated with the paint um, instead of just sitting on top. You'll notice as you're stirring that the water just kind of wants to sit on top at first. Stir well and incorporate it. And that looks good. It's moving really well. Now, sometimes this can get a little bit messy. So, you know, do this in some place that you're not going to worry about that. Um, I don't have that luxury right now. I'm kind of just at the table. It is what it is. Another thing that you're gonna have, and I'm gonna put all of this in a list at the top of this video, so it's super easy for you to get to, but you're gonna to want to have um, something to keep time on. I tend to use um, my phone. It's just easy and it's, we're addicted to them. Like they do everything, so yeah, that happens. Now here is our goal. The goal is that you want your paint to get through this guy within 25 to 40 seconds. 25 seconds at the fastest, that's gonna be as thin as it can go, um, or 40 seconds at the thickest, um, that's, that's the, or at the slowest. So that's the thickest you want it to be. Um, I will say for my lighter paints, or just in general, for me, I feel like the safest bet is to get as close to 40 seconds as possible. The thicker it is, the more coverage you have, um, and it makes the process just go faster. I've got paint all over me. Okay, so I've got my timer set to 40 seconds. I'm going to take my viscosity cup. And again, because this is so narrow, I'm able to really just kind of stick it in there and let it fill up. Super easy. Okay, now that it's filled, I'm going to go ahead and press start as I pull it up. All right, now see what's happening here is the liquid on the inside is beginning to drain out. That hole at the bottom is just as big as it needs to be um, to be able to test how fast it's coming out. I'm at 25 seconds. Mm -hmm. I've gone down about this much. This isn't going to do it. I'm going to let it run its course. We're at 10 seconds. As you do this a few times, you'll start to begin to know what the thickness is supposed to look like. Um, if I had to describe it, timer's done. If I had to describe it, I'm going to go ahead and pour this paint out. Um, I would say runny pancake batter, not the super thick fluffy kind, the runny kind, the kind that you just scoop and pour and it goes in, pancake batter. Okay, I'm going to set this over here to allow it to continue to drain. And then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to add some more water. You know, this camera is really good. Lena's saying I'm blurry. I apologize. Um, am I blurry right this second, though? Because right now, on my end, it's coming in clear. Um, that camera has got an amazing autofocus feature that ends up causing more problems than good. This is why I end up usually just using my, my phone. Again, my phone, guys. But... Sometimes I would like to feel more professional and use something other than my phone, but that never even works as good. So let me know if I'm still blurry right now. Once again, I added the water. I'm trying to incorporate it really well. I don't want to go so vigorously that I'm adding in air pockets. 
I just want to truly incorporate the water um, rather than it just sitting on top. And that's running pretty good. So I'm going to stop there. Scrape off this guy. Okay, now I've got my, my viscosity cup. I put it to the side so that it could um, drain. The words, they just leave. So lean, not clear, okay, good. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of water through it over here to the side just so that I know, yeah, it's good. It's not, you know, there's nothing in there that's too thick. We're gonna take it, and we're gonna put it in again. Down so that the paint goes in there. Yay! And once again, we're going back to the timer. Timer is set at 40 seconds. I have it ready to pull up. As I pull up, I'm gonna press start. Now, this is coming out a lot faster. So this may be the time that we have it. Here's another fact too. Um, you may add too much water. Then what do you do? Make sure that whenever you're starting this process that you still leave a little bit of paint in the can. That way, if you need it to thicken up a little bit, you add a little bit more paint. Um, down to 10 seconds. It's gonna be close, I think, but not quite. Nope, 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 cancel. Okay. Um, so I'm going to let this drain out a little bit. Oh, pour it out. Um, so, yeah, if you ever get to the point that you've just added way too much water and it's just running straight through, make sure you've got a little bit more of that paint on hand that you can add in there to thicken it up a little bit and continue. Now, if you were at the sink, this would probably go a little bit smoother than it's going for me right now. Um, because you can just clean up your mess as you go, <laughs> or whenever you're done. There we go. I just want to make sure that this guy isn't holding on to too much paint. All right, so once again, I'm going to add a little bit more across my fingers. Is this going to be the time? We'll see. Grab my stirrer and be patient with yourselves. It's fine, it's gonna take a few tries the first time. Okay, so good, I'm not blurry anymore, yay. I think a lot of times whenever I go out of the frame a little bit and come back in, um, that's what sets it off because it feels like it needs to focus on the wall and then me again. Super smart technology, but I wish I could turn it off sometimes. Okay, I've stirred it up. I did what I could not to incorporate any bubbles in there. I've got my viscosity cup. I'm gonna push it down in there, fill it up, and here we go. Pull it up, press start. Now you can see, hopefully you can tell how thick that is coming out therefore how fast it's coming out compared to the last couple of times. I'm at 25 seconds, which means if it had just run out, I'd still be fine. Fifteen seconds. It's like a race against time. Done. And we had three seconds left to go. So we are good to go. What this tells me is that um, if I am using the Finish Max, I'm good to go. If I am using the Super Finish Max, then typically this is going to work for your fine tips. Why is that important? You know, I have a hair again. And see, once again, I'm not fit for YouTube. This is craziness. I can't even ignore a hair that's on my arm. Um, it's going to be good for your fine tip. 
if you use the bigger tips, it's fine. They're great. They're going to work for more products, but they may not give you quite as fine of a finish whenever you're able to thin your paint down to a very minimal amount um, and allow it to just go so freely through your sprayer. Um, you're just giving yourself a little bit more allowance to get a nice, smooth finish. So that's what we want, right? Now, the last thing to do is to grab, remember this guy, our fine mesh strainer. We're going to set them in there. And then we're going to use this and we're just going to pour it all in. I say all now if you've managed to get yourself, you know, a quart of paint in this cup, um, then no, you can't put it all. You're going to see lines on the side and that's going to tell you how much you can, should, would add. You don't want to go past the top fill line. If you do that, then your spray is not going to work properly because there has to be a certain amount of airflow going into the container as it comes out. And now you can see there's a little bit of, you probably can't see the actual little grits, but there's some little grits in there um, that if they would have gone into the sprayer, then they would have just wreaked havoc and clogged everything up. What happens then is you have to just stop, breathe for a second, take it apart, rinse the whole sprayer out, and then proceed. You don't have to dump out the cup or anything like that, but you do need to go ahead and rinse out the, the tube that goes into here and the spout um, to make sure that you get out anything that's in there plugging it up. So now the best thing to do is to run to the sink and get all this stuff cleaned up. One of the key things that are gonna make your sprayer last longer and work better is making sure that you clean as soon as you're done. That way you're not fighting the very element that we want in our paints, which is the binder. The binder is holding everything together, drying it hard and making it actually stick. If you don't want it to stick to all your stuff, clean it up while it's wet. So that wraps everything up. What kind of sprayer are you using? I know you have two models, which one are you using? Um, this is the Home Right Finish Max. And I'm going to tell you guys, I use the Super Finish Max, which is the one that comes with multiple tips. Um, it's great if I were you and I didn't have any sprayers whatsoever. If I had enough money that I could buy the Super Finish Max, I would really just buy two of the regular Finish Max. And here's why. Um, if you're anything like me, you want to get your hands in there and thin down the paint. This already comes with a fine graded tip. Um, so if that's the case, and if I want to always spray a fine finish, then why not just go ahead and get this one, right? So if that's the case, then even better bonus, and this is what I personally do, um, is I keep one sprayer for my varnish. As you can see, this one has got my varnish in it. That's the only thing I use in it. So whenever I have one with a varnish and one that I can use for my paints, I never have to worry about the pigments from a pr previous paint plopping into my varnish and causing problems whenever I'm trying to lay a nice clear coat. Um, so that's me. Now, some people want to worry less about getting the viscosity right, in which case the Super Finish Max, which is at price at right around $100, um, is going to give you a little bit more of an allowance. If that fine tip doesn't help or work, then you can go up to the medium tip. If that one doesn't work, you can go up to the larger tip. You get a little bit more leeway when it comes to that. Me, I would just rather add a little bit more water to my paint. I love using that super fine tip to lay a nice smooth coat. Um, so then yes, again, this guy is the Finish Max. The other model is the Super Finish Max. They do have other models, which I think one is called the Pro. Um, I've used it, I don't like it. You can't get a super fine finish with it. It's meant for more rough textured stuff, like your, your outdoor fencing or your um, exterior walls, you know, where you need to lay a lot of paint really fast. Um, and it's really okay if it's not super nice and fine and smooth. Um, don't go that far. It's too much power. All of that power just displaces the paint all over the place and causes problems for what we are doing.
stick with the little cheesy guy. He's good. He does a wonderful job. I promise you, I have tried a thousand times to let myself upgrade to one of those pretty fancy sprayers that are like $300. And no, I can't do it. I can't justify it because I get such a beautiful finish with this guy. You can use it on the chalk base paints, um, or you can use it with the, the waterborne alkids like Benjamin Moore Advance. Shannon, I believe, has just begun with this. Um, so I'm interested to see how it fared for her. That's my favorite way to lay a white pigmented paint. Um, you don't really have to top coat it. So that's one less thing that you, ha you could have to do to cause it to discolor or go wonky as whites like to do. Um, hey, Marianne, it's good to see you. Does anybody else have any questions? I'm going to go ahead and tune out. Um, if you do, if you're watching a replay, let me know. If you do have a question, just put a little replay, like right type, y'all, the brain. What is wrong with me? Type out replay and then put your question. I'll know to go back to it um, and answer it. I don't want to miss anybody, um, but I think that's it. It's super easy. Just be willing to set aside a little bit of time to get your hands dirty and get the thing done. Once you do, you will question why you ever doubted it. It's so fast um, and it can make your projects go so much more seamlessly. It lays down such a nice, smooth finish, no brush marks, nothing to worry about. It's just glorious. All right, I'm gonna let you guys go. I hope you have a wonderful Thursday. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.